What is one moment you found yourself asking, what the heck am I doing with my life? I was working nights, going to college days, and socializing and sleeping at, um, got so exhausted I was hallucinating while driving, finally snapped when I realized I had to go to work again, and hadn't slept since the last time I had to go to work, and was breaking down physically and mentally. Frick this, went to bed and slept two days, and since two no-call no-shows was a fireable offense, I was now blissfully unemployed. Ordered two large pizzas and ate through both while sitting in bed. Literally no dopamine hit from any bite. Decided that food no longer gave me pleasure, and from there I lost 115 pounds. Edit. I also want to paint a picture of how pathetic this was. I brought both pizzas to bed. Not slices. No plates. I ate them straight out of the box, and no bite tasted good. It was just an empty feeling of sadness, and I stained my sheets. My partner of eight years had cheated on me, and I had just found out. He cheated with someone who I invited into our home with open arms. I was always very kind to this person and would make them lunches and desserts. They worked together. I was in terrible debt with school loans and some credit cards I had unwisely used. I was thinking about unaliving myself and would often take my dog with me to the top of a bridge. I'd talk to her and let her know how much I wanted to jump, how much I wanted to be gone, but I worried about her. She was an older lady and had some health issues. I didn't trust anyone to care for her the way I did. I had considered jumping with her, putting her into a pack, and scaling the fence, but I would sob thinking about how much that would scare her, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't put another living being through that. One day, we took a walk to a place where I could see the bridge. It was a couple of miles away, but I could see it clearly. I cried as I watched the tiny cars drive back and forth and thought, what am I freaking doing with my life? Everything I had experienced in the years prior, all traumatic stuff, had washed over me. I realized I needed to actually put some work into this if I wanted to be here for my pup. That was fall of 2016. I've since put a lot of work into myself. I was a better person for my pup, and I was a better person for me and those who cared for me. I realized my trauma does not define me. I am not the sum of that. Instead, I am the result of a lot of work, a lot of experiences, and a lot of help. I am grateful, fortunate, and privileged to have gotten out of that loop. It lasted for decades, but was incredibly intense for the last year and a half there. I honestly didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't want to. I recently lost my pup. Grieving the loss of a being is hard, but I also felt some grief in closing that part of my life. Now I say, yeah, look at my life, and I do it with a huge smile. I'm lucky. I'm grateful. For those who read, thanks for letting me share my tale. Apparently, I really wanted to share it with others. When I pawned my wedding ring to buy more pain pills, that particular incident actually got me to go get help. Been clean 11 years now and got my ring back a few months later. As crappy as that incident was, I needed that, and it probably saved my life. Addiction sucks so bad. It's most days, honestly, but most recently when looking into buying a house. The advice was to make sure you are good with being there at least five years before wanting to move or it's a bad decision. And it got me thinking about my job and social situation and all that. Basically, it came down to I don't even want to be here tomorrow, but I'm sort of okay with it. And I realize that describes most of my life. I don't really like it, but I can put up with it. When I had to move several bags of trash out of my shower so I could clean myself, only there wasn't really any space to put them because more trash bags. Granted, I was living in a really tiny space, but this was the moment I stopped and really had to think for a moment. Started on antidepressants a couple months later. When my boyfriend at the time was in the kitchen arguing with the woman he was currently cheating on me with, I was literally in between them as they were about to physically attack one another. Much better now. This happened in August 2021, three days before my birthday. That same day he kicked me out of our home because he thought I brought problems to the house with just the clothes on my back. I lived in my car for about two weeks because I was too proud and embarrassed to go to my parents. Eventually, I went back to my mom and dad's and two months later, I got my own place and had even furnished it with the stool and my bed. By August 2022, my apartment is fully furnished. I had gotten a promotion with better pay and hours. I traveled, saw some pretty awesome concerts, but most importantly, I learned to love myself again and learned how to live without the anxiety of putting someone before me and worrying if I was doing too much or not enough. When I realized I am the only one complaining about life and regrets to my friends, I feel that I have been in the same place for a long time and still expect things to be the same way as they were long ago. I then tricked myself into believing that everything in life will fall into place at the right time, whereas nothing even remotely similar to this has ever happened. I am afraid of being known as the guy who never left his parents' house, who always lived in the shadow of other people just to survive.
I cried in an airport because my flight home got canceled. Had a traveling job where I was gone at least one week a month, and it was making me depressed and anxious. A nice lady gave me a hug and thought a family member died or something. Then she told me to quit my job. Working in the kitchen of a seafood restaurant. It was a Sunday night. Restaurant had been closed for like an hour. I was still on the clock because cooks and dishwashers have to stay late and clean the whole kitchen every night. I was soaking wet, hot, and sore. My hands were raw because the dish soap we used eats away at your skin like lye, and I'd been scrubbing walls with steel wool. I reeked of raw fish and hush puppy batter and sweat. And my boss, the owner, decided to yell at me and threatened to fire me over a small mistake I made. And also, my phone bill was due and I didn't have enough money in the bank to pay for it. I was like, why the frick am I working for a boss who treats me like crap in a job that is physically destroying me when I'm not even earning enough to cover the one bill I have? Quit that night. Was planning to literally just tell the boss, frick you, I'm done, and leave. But he asked me to stay for a week and I agreed mainly because I was too exhausted to argue with him. Never worked in a restaurant since. And now when people tell me, but you're such a great cook, why don't you want to work in a restaurant? I laugh and tell them, first of all, because it doesn't pay enough. And second, because I already have before and I hated it. I love to cook, but there's a huge difference in the satisfaction you get in making whatever the heck you want with full creative control versus dropping hush puppies in a deep fryer and making the same dozen or so dishes hundreds of times a night. About 12 years ago, my husband at the time was outside, drunk, and mouthing off at two police officers, who went on to arrest him for breach of the peace. He had just attacked me for checking my phone while we were watching a movie, and I had called the police. I sat in my dining room table with two more police officers and a specialist officer from the domestic abuse unit. My three-year-old son was asleep upstairs. They asked me horrid questions like had I been ard, had he abused our son. What triggered in me at that moment was a realization that one, I had endured months of mental abuse at the hands of someone who was supposed to love me, which was now turning physical. Two, I wasn't raised by my strong mother to put up with this kind of crap. And three, I have to get both my son and myself as far away from this man as possible. I left the next day and didn't look back. When I was 24, I was working 60 plus hours a week in sales. My boss beat the concept of 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. are your golden hours. Maximize these hours by doing all of your planning, forecasting, admin type work before or after those hours. Always use those hours for calls and working on getting sales. I never took breaks to eat or take care of my own stuff. One day I was driving home from work and I was pulled over by a cop. My vehicle's registration was expired for months and I never noticed because I was so focused on my job. I was arrested by the local police, even though it was only a violation, technically. Sitting in the holding room at the local police station, I thought, why am I here? Then I considered my job that I was busting my butt at to live below the poverty line. That's when I thought, what the heck am I doing with my life? Got the violation rescinded, arrest stripped from the record, got a new job, and haven't looked back. If your work wants you to prioritize them over yourself, get the heck out of there. I had worked 15 years in baking. I am fully qualified. I've had six apprentices become bakers under me. I was in charge of the biggest production in bakeries in my city. I then quit to move to a small town, 5,000 people, got a job in the small bakery where I was micromanaged, underpaid, and my ideas were all shot down. If I just made an idea and gave it to the front girls, and it sold well. I'd get told how crap my idea was. They still made it because it sold. After three years of getting worse without realizing, the alcoholic boss yelled at me for singing to myself. I've applied for jobs I've never done before. I got one and learned how to drive a forklift, and then a month later, the better paying slash better hours one said I got the job, and I went to that one. I didn't realize I wasn't a piece of crap until I worked for other people. I had been beaten down so much. It's so nice to work with people who appreciate my work. I had a pretty sheltered childhood. Also no real peer group because I was so badly bullied. When I got into college, holy crap did I party. I barely got an associate's degree. I said yes to any and everyone who wanted to be my friend. Got into some very bad situations, but luck was on my side. When I was 21, I was told I had a heart defect and needed immediate surgery. The second day after having the chest tube slash vent off, I had to walk down the hall. There was a scenic view of Boston from MGH with one lone tree with bright yellow leaves. I stared at that tree and committed to getting into nursing school. I am so darn lucky. Working in a deli at a popular southeastern grocery chain, offered a sample of lunch meat to this redneck lady. As she's chewing, she asks if we have the Sara Lee stuff they have at Walmart. 
when a food particle flew out of her mouth and hit me in the face. I stood there with my plastic smile wanting to just drop dead right then and there. Eventually made it to trade school and learned machining. Ten years later and I now know there is more accountability working in retail, as my hands are covered in coolant and oil and dirt, trying to get the jaws off this CNC lathe that first shift really fricked up. It's okay, he's been there 30 years and his frick ups are blamed on me. I start to ask the question of just what am I doing with my life again. I'm three months from turning 40 and I'm just so tired of everything.